Okay, let's take a look at how to use the technology on a couple examples. Uh, so let's pick up where we left off with this uh, experiment of flipping a coin uh, 10 times. <clears throat> and the probability of getting 10 out of 10 heads or 4 out of 10 heads. And just to ask an extra question, um, let's say that we had, maybe I'd say, hey, you, uh, you can win if you get uh, at least 8. So let's also get so, like the probability of 8 or 9 or 10. All right, so 8 or more is the way we'll usually write that. Okay, um, so we can calculate all these uh, probabilities using StatDisk or other technology, but I'll use StatDisk. So go ahead and flip over um, to StatDisk. And, well, actually, sorry, before we do that, uh, let's make sure that we have verified um, all of the conditions are met for this for these three um, problems. So we do have a fixed number of trials. Uh, we're gonna flip the coin 10 times. Coin flips are independent of each other. What happens once doesn't affect the next time. You get heads or you don't get heads. And the probability should stay the same from trial to trial. So we're good on all of those. Uh, particularly that fixed number of trials and that constant probability are gonna be important when we actually type numbers into stat disks. Okay, so let's flip over to stat disk now. And we'll go to um, um, to analysis, sorry, and into probability distributions. And we're looking at the binomial distribution. There's a few others here we're going to look at also but in future sections. Um, so let's, first thing that the binomial distribution asks uh, is the number of trials. And we are going to do it 10 times. Uh, so that was already in there correctly. And uh, the probability of success on an individual trial is what they're meaning there. So each time you flip the coin or each time you do the experiment, what's the probability of success? And we'll put 0.5 in there. So there's that fixed number of trials and that fixed probability of success. And then um, X here is just saying, oh, how many were you interested in? Out of those 10 flips, how many successes do you want? Um, and we, at least for the first problem, we'll say eight. And after you evaluate, um, there's a few different things here. Uh, it says, hey, for eight trials, the probability of getting exactly eight is 0 0.0439-ish. Uh, so let me go ahead and fill that in. Uh, oh, sorry, we did eight or more. So let's go back and let's look at this column right here, which is 8x or greater. So in our case, 8, which is x, uh, or greater. So that's more like 5%. It's uh, 0 0.0547. Let's go. <clears throat> okay, so there's our 8 or more. And you'll notice that disk always gives you the probability just of 8, and then of 8 or fewer and then eight or more. So it always gives you those three things. Uh, so let's go back and answer our other two questions. Uh, the probability of just four heads, exactly. Uh, so let's see, back to stat disk, 10 trials, 50% chance of success and four successes. Um, and the exact probability there, so just of four, is 0.205. Um, yeah, I'll just go with that, 0.205. And the probability of flipping a coin 10 times and getting 10 heads, which seems very unlikely, but let's find out. Um, 10 trials, 50% chance, 10 successes. Let's evaluate that. So the probability of that happening is very tiny. Um, it's 0 0.000977. I'll round to three sig figs. Uh, so we got that point. Zero, 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 and then nine, seven, seven. Uh, you'll find the book most of the time, although not always, rounds to three sig figs. We should talk about sig figs real quick. Uh, sig figs just says ignore any zeros at the beginning and then count one, two, three places. Um, so that's three sig figs. 
Uh, this one down here, there was one zero at the beginning and then one, two, three significant figures. Um, and this one, there were no zeros at the beginning. So it's just one, two, three. And notice you count a zero if it's not a leading zero, right? If it's not at the beginning. So this two, zero, five, that is three significant figures. It's just leading zeros that you ignore like these or like that one. And like I said, the book rounds that way most of the time, but not all of the time. Uh, okay, so let's do something besides flipping a coin. Uh, so a couple quarters ago, I had a stats class and there were 32 students in the class. And we got to talking and we figured out that three different people in the class were twins. Um, so I went and did a little bit of research and found out that the uh, percentage of people being twins uh, is about 2% of people in the United States are twins. So what's uh, the, pr the question now is what's the probability of getting three? Three twins out of a group of 32. And maybe just for the fun of it, let's also do three or less out of 32. So we'll practice an individual probability and then a, a cumulative probability. Uh, so let's do three out of 32 with a 2% chance of success. So back to stat disk. Now we have 32 trials. There are 32 people in the class. There was only a 2% chance that any individual one of them would have been a twin. And I'm interested in getting the probability that three out of those 32 were twins. Um, so the probability of exactly three out of 32 is about 2%. And I'll go to three sig figs again. So ignore that first zero and then two, two, one. Uh, so three out of 32 is point zero two two one, and then three or less. So X or fewer um, would be a 0.996, pretty high probability. Oh, which kind of makes sense because with if only 2% of people are going to be twins, most of the time out of 32, three out of 32 is like 10% of the class. So uh, that's already pretty high. So most of the time it'll be three or two or one or zero. Um, so this is the basic idea of computing binomial probabilities. Uh, we'll always want to verify before we start the problem uh, that these four conditions are met. And then we'll have to be a little bit careful to say, because they'll hide this language various ways in the problem, but they'll say exactly three, or they'll say something like three or less. Um, they might also say, by the way, what's the probability that there would be uh, less than four? And I'd just like you to notice that less than four here, that's exactly the same problem as the one above it. And because this is discrete data, you can't have... When you talk about less than four, you can't have 3.7. So less than four for discrete data, less than four would have to be three or two or one or zero. Um, so less than four for discrete data, same thing as three or less. And the uh, stat disk doesn't have any way of doing less than four, right? It only has X or fewer. So if you want less than four, you'd have to put three into stat disk, so you get three or two or one or zero. Um, eventually we'll get into some continuous probability distributions where less than four could be 3.9 or 3.8 or something, but for the moment we're doing discrete things where you can only have whole number answers. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll continue in 5.4 to explore the, the binomial distribution a little bit more.